Thank you and welcome to the webinar, Find and Fix Your Security Gaps, hosted by Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Vitsys. My name is John Gill. I am Vice President of Business Development and Marketing for Vitsys. And today, we're excited to have with us Joe Leung, Product Marketing Manager with Hewlett Packard Enterprise Software, a big data platform. We also have with us here today Eric Thompson, uh, Vitsys Global Solutions Architect, who will be helping us with the actual demonstration part of the presentation. Today. HP and Vitsis have a very strong partnership and we think you'll find today's webinar very informative. Joe will be initiating the first part of the webinar shortly, but before doing that, I just wanted to mention that if you have any questions, please feel free to write these questions in the designated question pane area. And time permitting, we'll address as many of these questions as we can after the demonstration portion of our webinar is completed. So with that, I'll kick it over to Joe, and Joe will take us through the first few slides. Joe? Thank you very much, John. Hello, everybody. It's good to be here with you and with the business team. And uh, I'll just start off with a couple of observations that we have seen in the uh, security space here. So we all know that we are living in a rapidly changing world, and with these fast changes comes rewards and risks. And on the risk front, which is what we're going to focus on today, we see escalating and emerging threats from many places. Now the diversity and volume of risks and threats are just overwhelming the human security operators. And to top it off, there is unrelenting pressure for faster and more effective responses to either preempt the threat or address it in real time. This is really a perfect storm. Next slide, please. As we all know, the price of security lapses is, is quite high, and we're trying to preempt a threat or neutralize it in real time, or at least stop a threat from spreading. If we miss a threat or are late to addressing a threat, we're looking at potentially disastrous human and financial impact. On the other hand, false alarms could lead to a loss of trust, and in situations like this, your constituents may not take alert seriously, which may lead to an eventual oversight where a real threat is ignored. Not to mention other impacts such as productivity heads and loss of business as the false alarms lead to extended work stoppages or shutdowns. Just imagine even a temporary shutdown of a say, terminal at a major international airport could mean significant business interruptions. We're working, we're working on a very fine line indeed between oversight and false alarms here. Next slide, please. So a natural question would be, is my security infrastructure ready? Now here are a few questions that may help identify if there are any critical gaps that need to be closed quickly. So with IoT, the Internet of Things, and all the data capture technologies, we're seeing an avalanche of data of all kinds coming at us at a, at a pretty overwhelming rate, it is important to take a close look at our security environments and determine what kinds of data is needed, not just to detect, but to validate a threat. Why? Well, allow me to give you a simple example. Imagine your institution had been a target for demonstration, let's say, and if your video surveillance system told you that you had a dozen people loitering around your entrance, you might have a particular security response to address it. Now, if your security infrastructure had the ability to monitor social media, you might get an additional source of data telling you that about a couple of hundred demonstrators will be converging in front of your building within an hour. So obviously with the second data source, your security response will be quite different. So once we know what sources are critical, the next question may be to find out how you can tap into these sources 
which likely will be in different places or different formats. And then you have to make sense out of all the data coming at you very rapidly. So the next question also would be to determine how you would action against insights that you are able to glean from these various data sources so that you will have the right response at the right time. Next slide, please. So now let's move on to see how we can work together to fix any security gaps. And so, as John already alluded to in the beginning, we, Business and HPE, have come together and uh, to really help address any security gaps in the infrastructure here. As you will find out more very shortly, we play very complementary roles in our joint solution. Hewlett Packard Enterprise brings the big data analytics to the table, from database to freeform text, for example, social media, to video, image, audio. Our approach is to enable holistic analysis across diverse data sources. We have quite a few customers out there doing innovative things with our technology. Now, one interesting one is Dubai police in the United Arab Emirates. They have embedded cameras directly into the light bars of their squad cars. As the officers drive around, they are continuously analyzing vehicle license plates for outstanding violations such as tickets or warrants. And uh, this greatly expands the real-time enforcement capability. Just imagine driving into a sports stadium parking lot during a match where there are hundreds if not thousands of vehicles that can be checked by this mobile enforcement tool. So now let me pass the mic to John who will tell you a bit more about the business customers. Thank you very much, Joe. And as has been true with our solution areas previous to our partnership, our, our Converge solution is applicable to organizations in, in virtually any market area, both public and private, uh, many of which are represented by uh, the audience out there today viewing the webinar. Uh, but particularly organizations with an interest in enhancing their ability to manage situations and mitigate their risk uh, in their organizational environments move really from finding uh, the security gaps to fixing the security gaps. Uh, you can see represented here a number of customers that our organizations have uh, projects globally. One in particular I'd like to point out Auckland Transport in Auckland, New Zealand. This is a joint customer where HPE and Bitsys helped to manage security components for a important customer with a wide degree of complexity in their environment. Auckland Transport is responsible for managing the roads, bus system, the rail system, the ferry system, also the parking systems uh, for the Auckland metropolitan area. As you can imagine a tremendously complex environment with tens of thousands of sensors feeding back into uh, an operation center where the Bitsys and HP Converge solution help to not only provide better situational awareness for the end user, but the ability to manage situations as they crop up in that particular environment. So just, a, just an example, and as you see here, the number of different types of customers that uh, converged solution like ours can can address. Maybe just a few more words about CSIM, Bitsys Converged Security Information Management. Talk a little bit about what that means and how that uh, also works with our partner uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Since 2005, Bitsys has been a pioneer in the area of physical security information management. Many of you out there may know of Vitsis as uh, being a leader in this particular segment. Uh, but we continue to innovate and lead uh, this market area through the introduction of CSIM, or Converge Security and Information Management. And like Joe was mentioning earlier with regard to the number of disparate kinds of sensor data 
Um, the CSIM description really underscores the enhancements to our platform, which allow for the ability to manage information from multiple types of data sources going beyond uh, physical security and into the areas of cybersecurity, social media, uh, and the Internet of Things. But at the core of that particular approach really is how do we approach situation management. And as you can see represented here on this slide, we really approach situation management very much in the same way as organizations approach uh, solving a particular problem, particularly in the intelligence area. Tracking, collecting, analyzing, verifying, and resolving uh, a particular situation using the data that we have available to us uh, and applying the concept of operations and the standard operating procedures that are inherent to the organizations that we are deploying our projects into um, becomes very important in terms of um, applying the situational um, management approach uh, to our projects. The slide you're looking at now provides an overall architecture of the VITSA solution. Specifically, this slide depicts how our solution manages the data from multiple and disparate types of sensor inputs. These are seen down at the lower part of the slide where you can see the multiple and disparate kinds of sensor data that are being managed by the four engines that are represented at the middle of the slide, rules, geospatial, routing, uh, and dispatch. Um, we present this to the end user using the following uh, paradigm, uh, time, location, frequency, duration, and type. And as we move through the demonstration that we're going to have shortly, I, I would like to ask you to keep this architecture in mind. And importantly, we've applied this architecture as we move forward in, to our Converge solution along with HP Idle. You've heard Joe, Joe talk earlier about a particular uh, problem that an organization might encounter given a demonstration that's happening within their environment um, that would call for the need to pull in data from both a video management system and also potentially a social media platform. So the ability to be able to pull that information in using the HP Idle platform together with the Vitsis platform provides the end user with a much more enhanced uh, end product. And the idea is to provide the end user with enough information where they can make a more informed decision. At its core, what we're providing uh, is a decision support tool, but a super decision support tool uh, that pulls in multiple and disparate types of data uh, information and converges that information into actionable uh, intelligence for the end user. The way we do that is by correlating data, right? So data, unstructured data, sitting by itself isn't useful for the end user. It's important for us to be able to apply rules uh, to that particular data so it becomes useful to the end user. So what we do uh, is we work with our end customers to understand how they operate in their environment. Every customer has a way that they respond to events that are happening within their organization whether it's a fire, whether it's a bomb threat, whether it's a perimeter intrusion, whether it's a demonstration that's happening outside your gates. Most large organizations have a way that they respond to those types of events. What we do is we work with the customer to understand that and to be able to use the data at our disposal uh, and write rules around that data to be able to surface uh, actionable intelligence to the end user. So again, Lots of solutions out there that can provide situational awareness to the customer, not a lot of solutions that can provide actual situational management. So data correlation really is the key difference between finding problems within your organization and fixing problems and security situations within the organization. Um, so we'll move on to the next slide and I'll turn it back over to Joe we'll describe a little bit more about the HP Idle platform. Thank you, John. So guys, uh, let's take a quick look at the Big Data Analytics engine here. 
and we it's called HPE Idle, which is a proven on-premise customizable machine learning engine. Now, so as many of you know, machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence that enables computers to learn without being explicitly programmed. So it focuses on the development of computer algorithms that can teach themselves to grow and change and adapt when exposed to new data, which is something we've faced with right in the big data situation. So IDLE can assess over 150 data repositories, so it allows you to actually get to the, the complete picture, if you will, and also supports over a thousand data formats. So it allows you to put machine learning to work on virtually any data from anywhere. And there are hundreds of pre-built and pre-trained models to accelerate contextually relevant insights such as trends and patterns and relationships and sentiments across text, data, video, image and audio data. In addition to these machine learning capabilities, one of the many key functions of IDLE are its security for data protection, especially for enterprises, right, or in public sector, and its scalability to support anything from a departmental deployment to a cross-enterprise global installation. Next slide, please. So here we have the architecture of our joint business and HPE solution. And I will let John go over the, the CSIM portion here. But let me explain what HPE is, is doing here. So at first glance, you see that we have a lot of capabilities to support our holistic approach to physical security. And I'd like to point out these capabilities and then they are modules and they can be easily deployed independent of the others. So first, going from left to right inside the green box, first we have the APIs, the application programming interfaces, to enable easy integrations with third parties and we need them because we are the big data engine for powering applications. We need to be able to actually integrate with the, the applications very easily. Now we go to the, the next one, is face recognition. It really basically is about identifying faces in real time from CCTV video feeds and even broadcast uh, media and can perform one-to-one -one biometric verification or one-to-many identification for the closest match from a database. The technology allows automatic enrollment enabling new use cases such as detecting loitering or repeat visitors. And once the images have been captured, you can also perform demographic analysis to determine age, gender, ethnicity, facial expression, and clothing, for example, which will further enrich the intelligence from the video images. So next, for the vehicle recognition, the combined capability of license plate and vehicle make and model identification is critical for vehicles with missing or tempered plates. Right? And the license plate recognition supports over 40 countries worldwide, including all 50 states in the United States. The next one is SYN analysis. SYN analytics enables basically event detection and a, an activity that's identified from within a scene using things like tripwire, zone detection, or suspicious movements. Objects are identified and tracked with the detector continuously monitoring an area to identify suspicious objects that are not part of the normal, if you will, right, normal, quote unquote, normal scene. It can also learn a scene and recognize existing objects for asset protection. And the next one is audio analytics. We can perform speech to text processing so we can apply text analytics to get more in-depth insight from what's been 
spoken. Another capability within the text, I'm sorry, within audio analytics is the detection of the number of speakers, for example, and speakers' gender, language, and sentiment. Another interesting capability is the audio signature functions. It can identify the nature of a sound, such as a gunshot or glass breaking, alarm or shouting, for example. So when it comes to text analytics, it uses linguistically agnostic and a probabilistic, probabilistic approach, sorry, which is essential right, in the world where we have a lot of free-form expressions very often found in social media. What we're looking for are statistically relevant concepts, trends, patterns and relationships in the textual data. So coming back to my example earlier, we may be looking for a breaking trend in Twitter concerning a mass demonstration, for example. As for database analytics, this is where we analyze transactional records like passenger travel bookings or sensor data like that from motion sensors, right, to detect unusual and suspicious patterns or trends, let's say in a restricted area, for example. So with that, I'll hand you back to John to give you a bit more information on the business aspect of the solution. Thank you very much, Joe. I think that that's a very powerful slide because it, it really truly represents the, um, the strength of, of the converged solution and, and really points out the power of, of, of putting all of that data together. Oftentimes the data that we're talking about that's being managed um, is already inherent within the systems that our customers are, are operating. It's just calling out for the need for a software solution such as ours to be able to make sense of that data. The slide that you're looking at right now is probably an overly simplistic representation of, of, of that uh, CSIM situation flow. So if you move from left to right on the left hand side, uh, what you're seeing is what you might see in a typical operation center where there are alarms, events, and incidents coming in in a very unstructured way uh, to the operator. And it's really up to the operator to determine the importance of the different alerts that are coming to them on the left-hand side. The black box in the middle, the round circle, is represented as our rules and our geospatial engine. And you may remember those four engines that we had in the earlier architectural slide. By applying that logic to the data, we're now able to provide, over towards the right-hand side, structured, actionable intelligence for the end user. Uh, and actually present that in a way that provides the user with a workflow, an action plan. So it's not only saying to the user, hey, here is a situation, here is an event that you need to pay attention to but actually providing that operator with an action plan that says, and this is how you resolve that situation. Here's a problem, and here's how you fix it, and these are the steps that you need to address in order to make that happen. So in order to maybe put some actual words and pictures um, in real time to what we've been talking about, I'm going to turn this over now to uh, the VITSIS uh, global Solutions Architect, uh, Eric Thompson, who's going to actually provide a few demonstration scenarios of what the software actually looks like. And again, uh, please remember if you have any questions, uh, to type them into the question pane uh, on the GoToMeeting panel on your screens. Uh, thank you very much. So I'll turn it over to Eric uh, at this time. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, John and Joe. <coughs> Hello, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank you for your time today. We really do appreciate it. My name is Eric Thompson and I'm a solutions architect with Vitsis based out of North America. In the last slide, John showed how the Vitsis solution collects alarms, events, and incidents into rules and the geo engine, which then creates situation notifications for the operators to be able to use a rule-based response management. 
my goal for the next portion of this webinar is to demonstrate live how this CSIM situation flow looks and feels for an end user using the power of bits. That being said, let's get started. What you're looking at is what an operator would see when they first log into the Vitsis software. Now the Vitsis software is 100% web-based for both the user and administrator functionalities. Users can access the solution by providing their username and password on a login screen, which can be managed by Vitsis or by an integration to Microsoft Active Directory. Now Vitsis software offers two layers of capability. You've heard through the slides about situation management. Also, Vitsis uh, provides situation awareness. Now, situation awareness layer, which you are looking at right now, provides several discrete functionalities, including technology agnostic multi vendor video management. So, I'm just going to run quickly through this um, for the situation awareness layer. Um, and, and what this capability in this layer does is gives the operator real-time situation awareness with multiple types of technology systems that usually do not communicate with each other, but now these systems are connected because of the open architecture Vitsis provides. With that consolidation of data and devices, we can now present this information in many ways. On the top left panel, we are presenting those devices and sensors in a GOS map um, as you can see, you can see some ships, you can have planes, um, any type of juice that you could use sensors for. In the top right panel, you're looking at a floor plan. Um, and this can, you can drill down the first floor, second floor, um, any type of floor that you have a CAD diagram for. We can also pull in news feeds. We can pull in radar sensors and also uh, CCT video and, and from multi different vendi, uh, vendors. The Vitsis solution incorporates a universal video viewer. This ensures that video from different types of CCTV vendors is also presented and controlled in the same way no matter what the source comes from. So if an, a business has three or four VMSs and they do not talk to each other, well, Vitsis can lay on top and we can pull all those feeds into our platform and now the end user has one platform instead of using all three. Uh, so this ensures that the video from different types of CCTV always is presented and controlled in the same way no matter what the source is. Now a couple other things that this layer, the situation aware uh, layer provides is that the operator can interact with these icons on the floor map. Now what this does is if an operator needs to see where the fire extinguishers are, if something happens, uh, access control, you can right click, be able to see if the door's locked, where you know what type of door it is um, and the great thing about having your know, first aid kits you can actually pull reports of when these fire extinguishers when these first aid kits were actually inspected um, with a click of a button so enough about really the situation awareness layer let's dive into the situation management so what you're looking at right now is the situation management layer this is the layer where the platform collects correlates, converts vast amounts of data into meaningful and actionable information based on the organi organization's risk policies, standards, and compliance requirements. Now as an operator, there's a couple ways where you can see these situations. You can see it on a map, as you can hover over, you can see the different types of situations. So if you're a global entity and you have multiple you know, places around the world, you can have one operation center where all these are pulling in and the operator can see where these situations are. You can actually have a split view where now you can actually see the list of the situations that have come in to the user and see on a global map where those are located. There's also a situation preview where you can hover over each situation and get a preview of what is going on which if it's cameras, if it's a CAD floor map, if it's you know some video analytics, um, the operator is able to see and see if there's any log entries and whatnot. Um, and that gives the power to the user to be able to get a quick glance of what that situation is. Now to kind of step back, you've seen what the situation management UI looks like from the 
global map to the list view, but we haven't really talked about the difference between a situation and an event. So at Vitz's, we define an event as a device or system. Um, it's made up of a name or value of pairs uh, that each contains some data. It can be seen and processed by the Vitz's software. Um, it creates an alarm, an event, or an update sent from a third-party system. Uh, for instance, like idle, HP idle. So we define a situation as a collection of events. It's created by a rule or a manual from what the business defines as. It contains the information tools needed to analyze, verify, and resolve the situation. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the situation list view. So here you see about nine or ten different situations that have come in to the operator's uh, situation manager view. The first one you see is a suspicious package enterprise. You can see the severity, when it was created, the status, who is it assigned to, and a little description. You can see a vehicle height warning, a foreign object on track, another suspicious package, a gunshot detected, an idle forklift. If you have a sensor and, and you have a factory and, and there's a forklift that is supposed to be tracked and it's idle for a certain amount of minutes, you, we could pull an alarm and push it into the VITS's situation management system. Person under duress. If you're in a hospital ER and, and one of the nurses presses one of the panic buttons, it's going to cause a situation. Uh, multiple access attempts. Uh, social media alert and then a cyber alert. So you could see from just this list that many different types of subsystems that can be pulled in, create rules, you know, do the routing and do the dispatch utilizing the power of VITSIS. So let's go ahead and dig into a couple of these situations. So the first situation we're going to look at is the suspicious package. So as an operator, the first thing I'm presented is four panels. On the first top left panel, I can see the floor plan. On the far right panel, I'm looking at a camera, another camera on the far, far left, and now even and now I'm looking at the video analytics, which could be HP idle. So as that situation comes in, I'm presented with an action plan. Now with these action plans, this can be, you know, what the risk policy, the standard, or some type of compliance that the, the organization needs to apply for. So I'm looking at it, I'm an operator, and I'm evaluating where the suspicious package is. So I can see that it's on this stairway, I can see who's coming up this stairway, and now I can analyze real-time video or recorded video, and now I have to make, you know, do some investigation, you know, does this package look suspicious? And so the great thing about this is you don't need subject matter experts. Because of this action plan, as an operator, I'm able to click through and go through a dynamic plan. So let's go through it. So investigation, suspicious package has been detected. And so that's been detected through video analytics, maybe with idle, HP idle. And so the next one is, what does it look like? Is it a suitcase, a box, a vehicle? So as an operator, I would click that that's, and so with the clicking, that gives the operator the ownership of going through this action plan. So once I click it, that means I've owned that first step, that second step, that third step. So also I can, you know, view occupancy information. Do I need, is this package, do I think it's a bomb? Do I think it's something? You know, how many people are actually in this building? And with a click of a button, I can find that out. Dispatch a guard. Here I can see where the closest guard is and be able to alert them through the action plan, through the dynamics and the functionality through a button. Is there a threat? I'm going to say yes. And so once I say yes, it's automatically going to change to a different action plan. So evacuation. You know, again, you guys can read this and you keep going through and going through. So what if it is a bomb? You know, what, you know, a lot of CSIMs or PSIMs, you know, that's it. But the great thing about and the power of it is, is I can actually create a new situation with a, a click of a button. So if I feel like 
as an SME or someone thinking this package might be a bomb, I can drag this icon over. And now I actually have a new action plan because of the icon. So now I have suspicious package. I've determined as an operator that it looks like a bomb. I'm going to pull the icon and now I'm going to start another action plan with just a click of my mouse um, and just go through that list. You can mass notificate, you can you know, call the police, the fire department, the bomb squad, all through a click of a button and again go through the action plan. Another great feature that Vitsis has is that we have a mobile feature of responders. So if we have like guards or we have bomb squad or we have people who have of the mobile app, you know, by leveraging the mobile feature, the software can rapidly be deployed. It provides real-time situation awareness and information management capabilities to the remote users and responders. And with a click of a button, I can pick who I want to send this actual, actual situation plan. They can actually load and see it on their phone and upload video and, uh, and photos. So with that all being said, we actually have a detailed report. So the great thing about that detailed report, once an operator and I go through this situation, everything is recorded. And I can send this to my supervisors, I can send it to whoever needs it. You can see the resolution time, the response time. So if you have some KPIs of different, if you have compliances for some government or state regulation and you have to have a certain response time, here you can actually see the response time. And if it's not in compliance or not, you know, this is where the, you can actually tweak it or not tweak it um, and whatnot. And so going through the action plan, you can see as what the operator clicked, what uh, drop down selection they picked, what actual cameras were pulled up once that video analytics pulled in where that suspicious package was, the viewing history, who viewed it, how long it was viewed, the event history, the notes, if I had any notes to add on to this situation before completion and every type of audit, anything about the activity of the history um, is, again, a click of a button, you have all this information. So let's go ahead and go into another situation. So this situation is about a bridge and, and seeing if you know, a tractor trailer, or if someone's towing a sailboat, that this video analytics camera is actually picking up the height of these vehicles before it goes through uh, or under this bridge. So here you can see the live video, you can see another video or another view, and here you can actually see, uh-oh, the parameters say that this truck is too high to go under this bridge. So again, as an operator, it picks it up, and you can already have pre-built in uh, messages for uh, these text signs. So you know, driving kills. You know, but here you can see caution, vehicle too tall. That is automatically going to switch to that saying when the camera picks up that that truck is too high. And now as an operator, again, I have my action plan and I can go through, I can react, I can change the sign, you know, if it, if it needs to be ad hoc, I can change it with a click of a button, the vehicle type, um, and, and so on. And so just like the, the first situation, you know, there's just real time, and, and this is really where we're showing the power of Vitz's of being able to just collect, correlate, and just, just make that's this data into meaningful and actionable information for an operator um, and, and not having multiple different systems, multiple you know, uh, systems that the operator has to learn. It's all in one, under one UI and everything. So the last situation I'd like to show is a foreign object on the track. So here you can see that this lady, the video analytics picked up that if anyone is in this yellow zone, 
that is going to create a situation and get pushed to the situation management. And now, as an operator, I'm seeing live what's going on, and I have a the capability to say, okay, it's you know nothing's on the track. It was a false alarm, or for an object or person on the track. And here you can see that it is a person. And here it's automatically going to send a notification to the operator, hey, there's a person on the track. It's, it's already pulled up the videos. And so with just the click of a button, pulling in video analytics, CCTV cameras, you know, having your an actual uh, plan of the subway, and it's just with a click of a button, you're taking this data, you know, instead of situation awareness where I I can see it, but I can't do anything, um, and that's what we're doing here. We're taking that data, you know. Again, if if that person's hurt, you know, I can again create another situation. I can, you know, call in an ambulance, you know, a medical emergency action plan. Go through that as an operator. Um, so just a great the ability just to create situations on top of situations using all this data, using all these different subsystems that integrate into VITSYS, uh, it's just very, very powerful. So uh, the really the last thing is, you know, let's say at the end of the shift or a supervisor, you know, they want to be able to see some real-time statistics um, and so Vitsis has an enterprise business intelligence dashboard. So quickly, we have, you know, these are out of the box, 20 plus different types of reports or dashboards that are created. Um, just very easy drag and, drag, uh, drag and drop. So that's just a, a great way to be able to take all these situations, what's happened um, in a, a sit, you know, an hour, 30 minutes, and just be able to get some real data uh, to be able to make some supervision or, you know, just different types of, uh, you know, business intelligence off based off these reports. Well, that was the quick demo of really the three situations that I wanted to show today. Um, and I thank you. And John, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. Much appreciated. And everybody, hopefully you'll get a sense from those scenarios uh, what, what the Converge solution is, um, makes possible uh, in, in terms of being able to uh, bring uh, the data that is already sitting within your environments bring that data to life by applying uh, the rules and the logic uh, to that data um, and, and, and surfacing uh, the actionable intelligence. And uh, again, we're, we're very proud to, to have this partnership with HP where uh, we, can, we can provide uh, that enhanced intelligence to you. Among the, the benefits that um, the Converge solution brings, and, and typically, you know, what we want to make sure that we're bringing to you is, is, is the idea is to, is to bring value to your organization in order to mitigate uh, the risk that you have uh, in, in your organization by getting out in front of situations before they spiral out of control and become uh, critical issues. And, and we do that in a large degree by, in the scenarios that Eric uh, demonstrated, point that out, we do that in a large degree by automating to a large degree those tasks or activities that had previously been done manually. Our solution will allow your organization to realize improved situational awareness. We can reduce both OPEX and CAPEX costs uh, for your organizations both up front and moving forward. By automating those tasks in activities, we can help to address manpower efficiencies as well uh, and create staffing uh, efficiencies. And importantly, we can integrate uh, with virtually any product out there uh, through their APIs and SDKs. So um, the vast majority of subsystems that you already have in your organizations, we can connect to those and have connected to them in other projects. Uh, through their APIs and SDKs and pull that full functionalities, uh, pull the fun full functionalities of those subsystems up, up into our platforms. And importantly, 
as Eric pointed out uh, towards the end of his demonstration, we're, we're protecting and tracking your business assets as well. So we're allowing you to have the ability not only to report the situations that are happening within your organization, but also to track those situations both in real time and historically because we know as security professionals it's important for you uh, to be able to understand the incidents that are happening in your environment so that you can plan and allocate your resources and budget your resources moving forward uh, more effect effectively and efficiently. So Joe, I'm going to kick it back over to you. That concludes um, uh, my part of the presentation. I, I wanted to ask if you had anything to add before we, um, before we turned it over to any questions that people might have. Well, thank you, John. I just wanted to echo your sentiments about the fact that, you know, we are working very closely here to make sure that our joint solution is really going to serve, you know, the requirements of our customers here and really adopting that holistic approach to help our customers put together that that puzzle right because there's so many pieces out there and the more complete the puzzle you're going to have the more likely your response can be more appropriate and I think that's the key thing we're trying to get it together so I just wanted to, to echo that point and so with that I'll head it back to the the audience, if any questions they'd like us to respond to.